Who? It is your boy Ricky Moto, the man, the myth, the legend. Oh man, look at this M4. God damn. Ooh. I'm out of breath just from that. I gotta move the car out the way first. My helmet is literally banging into everything. Look, I just coated the car with the GTS logo. <laughs> I also did the Rolls Royce sound effect. That's why when I started up, it's like dun dun. I've been wanting to do some car vlogs actually. Not today, but like eventually. So maybe we'll do some of these type of POV type stuff in the future. Definitely look kind of crazy with the helmet on. Look like I'm race car vibes. Getting better at this manual transmission. Alrighty, alrighty. I haven't driven the E90 in like weeks. I don't even know if it starts, honestly. I've been thinking about getting rid of this car just because I never drive it. I wanted to have two cars at first, but then now it's kind of redundant. Anyways, we're going to be hopping on the bike because today we're doing an exhaust review on this full system toast exhaust. Oh, we have about half a tank. I don't want to get gas. Too lazy for that. Oh man, I forgot. I need to put some music on. <laughs> music. 17% on my phone. This has been my go-to song recently on repeat. It's called By Your Side by Connor Maynard. Oy, 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 oy. God damn. It is a beautiful day outside. Oh my goodness. So today I'm going to be talking about the exhaust. I'm going to give you my thoughts about, you know, how it sounds, how it performs and you know everything about it you know from the installation process customer service on the brand because i feel like there's not a lot of you know conversation about the toast brand in general or the toast exhaust specifically for this bike because for the r7 um it's a fairly new bike so there's really not that many mods or exhaust options out there for this bike i'd say the most popular exhaust so far for the r7 has been the sc project exhaust and a lot of people get that one you know i've never really seen reviews on the toast exhaust and there's not really any videos out there even featuring the Toast Exhaust on the R7. So I'm going to be the first out there, the first reviewer on the Toast Exhaust for the R7. I've heard a lot of complaints about people saying Toast is a bad exhaust, uh, sound-wise, quality-wise, etc, etc. And I want to explore that idea today to see why there's so much hate around Toast. Because personally, I actually really like this exhaust. Um, I think it sounds amazing as you guys can hear right now. It's a very loud and deep sort of raspy tone. And as I start, you know, really pushing the bike, you can start to hear what it sounds like in the higher RPMs. Oh, I might be low on gas. Oh man, I don't want to go too far though, because I'm not trying to have an empty tank. But anyways, yeah, I gotta say, first things first, I mean, exhaust is mainly about sound, and the sound quality on this is actually really solid. I love the way it sounds, and when I let off at the lower RPMs, it does crackle and pop and snap. The bike is not tuned yet. Uh, this is a full system, which does kind of require a tune. So I definitely got to do that soon. But as of right now, even without the tune, um, the bike is really smooth. I don't really notice any issues with it in terms of, you know, performance wise. Damn, those pops. But yeah, with the current, you know, stock tune on here, it does pop and crackle at the lower RPMs when I let off, which is actually super sick. I love that overrun sort of extra fuel burning in the exhaust pipe sound. Even on my R3, I specifically tuned it to make pops. So uh, it's cool that, you know, just straight out of the box after you install it, it already does that. I feel like Toast makes one of the loudest exhausts just because it's unfiltered. There's no like baffles in it. If you want something that's just insanely loud, that's unfiltered, uh, raspy as heck, <laughs> you know, that's the way to go. Ooh, this thing sounds amazing. Now this thing is really sounding like a real bike, man. You know, when this bike was stock on the quiet ass exhaust, it literally felt like I was riding a scooter. <laughs> now this really feels like a bike now. And the crackles, man, is yes, there. So sound quality, I would give it like a 10 out of 10. Yeah, it's loud, but it's not to the point where your ears are ringing or it goes sort of muffled after a while. On my R3, I had a full system Acropovic and after riding on that for a while, my ears would actually like get kind of muffled and like my ears would pop kind of like on an airplane and i feel like that's like pretty bad for your ears like you're getting you're probably getting some like hearing loss from that uh but this one's not overbearingly loud and i think it's also because of the bike you know um you know a lot of times i'm cruising in low rpms like 3000 rpm when i'm just cruising 
I tend to short shift a lot just because I don't like pushing the motor too much especially because this thing hasn't fully broken in but the R3 was overbearingly loud and that's because it's a smaller CC bike so you really have to keep the RPMs really really high so you're like basically revving it close to red line every time just even on cruising speeds so that's why it sounds a lot louder i'm pretty sure if i was gonna keep this in a high rpms non-stop it'll be extremely loud to the point where it's unbearing but for the most part i'm just cruising and the only time i really bring up the rpm is if i'm doing a like a pull or something now in terms of quality on the exhaust i give it like a 9 out of 10 uh very solid i had an acropovic full system and you know in terms of handling the exhaust you know feeling the material makeup of it they're both extremely solid it's fully made out of aluminum so it's very lightweight uh it's very strong and sturdy the pipes didn't feel like very like thin and whatnot so uh, i don't know maybe so i don't know where people are getting that sort of cheaply made concept from uh maybe if they're comparing it to like even more higher end brands uh, like i don't know i never really dealt with other exhausts so i don't really know but in terms of just like my own personal feeling of it the actual build quality is very very solid and when i was mounting everything up everything fit properly it's not like i had to make adjustments and wiggle it in and like everything like fit like a lego and that leads me to my next point of the installation process so this is where it gets a little bit tricky um i gotta say the installation was pretty easy for the most part and all the bolts did line up and all that but this the main reason why the installation i had some issues with is because of the customer service so i think this is where toast is lacking and this is where probably a lot of the complaints are coming from um well first you know first of all toast is a pretty small brand they're not like well known like acropovic m4 you know stuff like that with that you know they're not going to be as consistent when it comes to delivering you the expectations of a customer so i ordered this exhaust um about two months ago and you know they did send me an email right after i ordered the exhaust saying that oh they're experiencing some delays and whatnot which is understandable but they said the delays would be like 10 to 14 days so like maybe one to two, one and a half to two week delay and then they'll ship it out so i was expecting to get this exhaust within three to four weeks after ordering it it's been over a month and i had no shipment no email confirmation about anything after that so I reached out to the customer service and I'm like, hey, uh, I understand you guys have some delays, but you know, it's been over the time frame that you guys promised. So what happened to my exhaust? Did you guys, you know, forget about it? Do you guys still have it or is it what's going on? And the customer service basically replied to me saying, oh, yeah, 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 we had some delays or whatever. And then they're like, oh, we'll overnight it to you. And then literally the next day they send it out and I got it. So it's like, oh, that's weird. It seems like they had it the whole time, but they probably forgot about my order. So that was a little bit disappointing. It's like, it seems like, you know, customer service wise, they gotta be a little bit more, you know, consistent with it. And that wasn't even the end of it. So I got the exhaust and I then, you know, took my bike apart to do the installation. And if you guys watched my installation video, you can see that I actually ran into some issues. So everything did, you know, go on as intended. But when it came to the mounting bracket in the rear, where the muffler, uh, you know, bolts onto the frame of the bike, they forgot to send me the hardware that goes into it. So with the missing hardware, I couldn't properly install the muffler onto the bike because there was no bolt. It was literally missing. And so what I had to do, I had to jerry rig a solution of my own. Uh, you know, I just like messed around with the bracket. I did have to go to the hardware store to get some extra bolts and, you know, washers and hex nuts and whatnot. And, you know, I made it work. Uh, if you saw my video, I basically explained how I pretty much fixed it. And, the, and my method, honestly, I feel like it's better than what their method is because I've seen other tutorials on people who had these exhausts. And when, they did, and when they did the installation, they had to use like an extended bolt with like a spacer and like all this very complicated stuff that is honestly very unnecessary. And I don't know if that's like a, maybe a lack in design, so to speak, for on them. But my method, I feel like, is a lot more seamless uh, of mounting the exhaust compared to what they have intended for, you know, their build. But yeah, I eventually got to work. It was a pretty simple solution, but, you know, yet again, customer service, you know, like not only did they delay my package for a few weeks, they also forgot to give me very crucial hardware, which is, you know, a very important aspect of the exhaust. You know, you can't put exhaust on without proper hardware. But the hardware that they were missing was like, I don't know, like a dollar or two that I paid for. So it wasn't like a big deal. I decided not to reach out to them and make a complaint just because, you know, I don't want to make things more complicated than it is. And I'm not going to, you know, cause a fit over two dollars worth of hardware. After I got that fixed, everything was pretty much seamless. It's not loose. It's not rattling. It goes on perfectly good. The placement of the O2 sensor, everything is like in a correct spot. Honestly, I don't think it's as bad as people make it seem to be. You know, I really enjoy it and I don't regret my purchase. 
I will say it's quite a pricey exhaust because there's a lot of other options out there that are like, I don't know, seven to eight hundred dollars. The Toast exhaust starts at like a thousand or so or like thirteen hundred. So it's quite expensive and for the price you're paying for it, you would expect a little bit better, you know, customer service. I'd say the actual material and build quality is not a complaint. Now, in terms of performance, honestly, it doesn't really feel much different, but that's also because the bike's not tuned. It's still in a stock tune. So it's not fully making use of the extra horsepower gains that the uh, Toast exhaust would have, you know, provided. But the exhaust does shape some weight. Um, I think the OEM exhaust is about 17 pounds and then the Toast exhaust is about six pounds. So it's a big, big, you know, weight reduction. And I don't know if it's just like a placebo effect, but the bike does feel a little lighter and a little bit more flickable. You know, it's like, it just feels more nimble. And I don't know, that, like I said, it could be placebo, but you know, 11 pound difference isn't like huge. So it's not like you're gonna really feel it. it doesn't necessarily feel faster or anything. Um, even in the high RPMs, it feels pretty similar. I guess the bike does breathe a little better now just cause you know, there's less restriction on the airflow. But I mean, the main reason why people get exhaust is for the sake of the sound, not really performance. If you want to get performance, there's a lot more other stuff you can do, like a tune, sprocket change, you know, the intake area, you can get like more airflow and whatnot. But I'm satisfied with the power on the R7. It's not like I needed to be so much more faster. But yeah, that's pretty much kind of like my overview, my thoughts on the Toast exhaust for the R7. And I will say overall, my experience with it is pretty good. Other than the customer service issues, you know, I have no complaints on the actual exhaust itself. I don't regret my purchase. And if I were to do it all over again, I would probably buy the Toast exhaust over other exhaust. I love the way it looks. The razor tip is super aggressive. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. It's been your boy Ricky Moto, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.